I'm here today at the 101st uh, Farm Show with Ben Wank, a fruit grower in Adams County. Actually, he's in kind of a multifaceted business there in uh, uh, Adams County. So I'm going to ask first, how did you see the in the 2016 harvest? How did you see your harvest turn out? Well, uh, 2016 was a trying year uh, for most of us in agriculture in Pennsylvania. We, uh, because we spread our risk out over a number of different crops, we're able to kind of, you know, stem the tide a little bit. Uh, we had no peach, uh, no cherries really whatsoever. Uh, plums, apricots, all those were complete failures. The, the drought was really hard on our vegetable production. Uh, but we had our, our two main crops are apples and peaches, and for the most part, uh, despite some quality losses, it was close to a full crop. So we were kind of able to, like I said, stem the tide of some fluctuations in our weather and our climate to, to really uh, have an a, a unspectacular but manageable year. So some of that stone fruit loss, was that because of the freeze we had there late spring? Exactly, yeah. We got, I think, down to 19 degrees on the 19th of April, thereabouts, and uh, that was at full bloom. So whenever your, your blossoms are out, they're very delicate, they're very uh, uh, fragile and, and susceptible to, to cold weather injury. And um, really, we could have lost it all over that, that cold night, but uh, we were uh, able to salvage some of our crop by the time we got it all thinned off. So at Three Springs, what would you see? say the, uh, how was stink bugs this year as far as fruit damage? Stink bugs, uh, we had some problems, but you know, we really feel like the, the natural enemy, enemies, the, the predator insects that are out in our orchards, they've started to do a much better job of controlling stink bug without us having to concentrate on them as much as we did when they first showed up on the scene. So stink bugs, are there's definitely a, a concern about them. We definitely monitor for them. We're always aware of what the population size is and what their potential to harm us is. But for the most part, uh, less of a concern now than maybe three or four years ago, which is a good thing. So you think there's a natural predator out there for stink bugs? Yeah, our, our uh, folks who are conducting the research at Penn State there at the Fruit Lab in Biglerville have done a really good job of isolating different insects that are uh, kind of parasitize the eggs of the stink bugs. In other words, the stink bugs will lay their eggs and then different wasps or other, other species of predatory insects will lay their eggs inside of those eggs and destroy them before they're able to hatch. So, you know, when we're successful with those uh, predatory insects, it can eliminate a large number of uh, stink bugs in a short amount of time because they're getting them at, the, at that egg stage when they're more vulnerable than the big clunking adults that are so hard to, that are so hard to kill and that end up in everyone's house stinking up the place. And so we can get rid of them as their, as their eggs. That's, that's good for everybody. So Ben mentioned the fruit research lab in Bignerville. And we're going to have to do a story there. They do some fantastic things. I worked a couple summers at the fruit lab and uh, in the intima, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a very important part of tree fruit agriculture in, in Pennsylvania and regionally into Maryland, uh, Virginia, Delaware, places like that. They really all depend on, on the research done at Penn State and Biglerville. Yeah, like I said, someday we'll have to do a story on that, but we have such a resource in Biglerville, the Penn State Fruit Research Lab, that it's uh, tremendous. Okay, now, Ben, you're in another business and uh, you take some of these apples mm -hmm. and I don't know what kind of apples you use to make cider but do you make hard cider or do you make both kinds? Uh, we, we do make both kinds. We attend a lot of farmers markets in, in DC and Baltimore and Philadelphia and some in, in central Pennsylvania and uh, for those markets we take fresh cider which is non-alcoholic. It's a a blend of uh, really all the apples that we grow on the farm, a good complex sweet and tart kind of blend of apples and that's a popular thing at market but yeah the, the new and, and more exciting thing that uh, we just got into is uh, Plowman Cider which is our, our hard cider brand. What was that brand again? That's Plowman, Plowman Cider, like the British spelling. And so where, where do people get that cider? Well, uh, we have it available at uh, some restaurants and, and bars around uh, Central Pennsylvania and also in Philadelphia where I, I have a lot of contacts from having done the farmers markets there for a while now. And uh, yeah, we're also taking it to farmers markets in the state, which is something that our limited winery license allows us to go and in the state we're able to attend farmers markets and 
I might be new at the beverage industry, but I know how to run a farmer's market. We're, we're ready to, to sell, sell that cider directly to the public at, at farmer's markets in PA. So can someone come to your farm and purchase it there? By the way, it's just outside of Gardner's. Not right now. That, that's something we're working towards. Um, we'd like to have a tasting room. We'd really like to invite really the whole region to come and experience hard cider in Adams County where all the apples are grown. We have a, a number of great craft producers in Adams County and it's a growing industry and uh, you know it's it's a beautiful landscape to, to enjoy apples and enjoy cider and so we're working our way up to that. We'd like to have a tasting room but for right now we're, we're taking our stuff on the road. All right and uh in today's climate that we're in, particularly in D.C., but uh, I know we worked a lot with Ben on some of the regulatory issues and hurdles that you had across, which were way too many, and we won't talk about one particular one that really had me ticked off, but <laughs> anyway, just kind of let people out there know what kind of hurdles you had to go through, not particularly, but that burden that was on you. Sure, well, I mean, in the case of uh, hard cider, where it's it's we have an advantage in the fact that we're a farm that produces cider so so we have a source for our apples we don't have to go very far to get the apples we need to make hard cider but at the same time you know we have to make all the apples then press it then turn it into cider and and certainly there's a lot of industries where you don't have to go through all that extra work of, of picking them all by hand and squeezing them um, and you know it's a lot of times cider is is kind of part of the beer market in a lot of ways and for the most part beer's first ingredient is water. They can just turn on the tap and, and get water to make beer. We have to pick everything by hand and squeeze it and ferment it and blend it and all that. So you know we have a, a lot of uh, burden on our production. Our, our margins are a lot slimmer and a lot of times we're confronted with regulations that you know they just seem a little bit overreaching, um, seem a little bit I mean, it's 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 a, a level of control that that it becomes very burdensome on a small producer like us. If we were a larger company, we could hire someone just to do the regulation and compliance. We're never going to get there. We're a, a small family farm in Northern Adams County, uh, but essentially we have to comply to, in the same manner that that a business of any size does. And so any, any relief that we could find legislatively on, on small scale producers, especially on farm producers, because uh, neighboring states like New York have special considerations for people who are using Pennsylvania, well in their case, New York products in their beverages, and, and give a little bit of extra credit to folks who are both farming and producing these beverages. That would be a, a really big step forward for the whole of the craft beverage industry in Pennsylvania. So any last things that you want to tell anybody about Three Springs Farm? Um, well, it's, uh, it's a family operation. It's me and my dad, my uncle, my cousin Greg's come into the business in the last couple years. And, uh, you know, it's something we have a passion for. We, we enjoy what we do. Um, we, we wish we had more time to do a lot of the, the actual work of farming. We do have to spend a lot of our time uh, negotiating some of our regulations. And, and it's part of doing business, we understand. But... Um, it's, it's been a passion of ours for seven generations and looking forward to keeping that trend going for other generations. Well, you're the start of the next generation. Yeah, we're absolutely, we're, we're uh, trying to move the business forward and, and make sure that our farm's in, in, uh, better, in better shape. It's a, a, a more robust farm for our next generation as it was when the generation before got it, and that's, that's all we ever tried to do. Well, thank you, Ben. You got it. Thank you very much.